We're standing in the heart of L.A.'s San Fernando Valley in a place called Woodland Hills. And down there is Rich Taylor's backyard. In two weeks, we're going to change that wasteland into an extreme fun land. I'm Josh Temple. Welcome to Backyard Nation. Meet Rich Taylor, a single father of two boys, Zach, five years old, and Richard, eight. To give his sons more room to grow, he bought the house across the street. Why? It's a massive backyard. It's like a half acre, just so much space. It became available to buy, so I just jumped on it because of the backyard. Rich is a former professional motocross racer, and his sons are chips off the old engine block. They spend every free minute on anything with wheels. I come out here every day just cracking up laughing because they have something set up, some kind of ramp combination or, you know, they're crazy. I live for my boys. Everything I do is to try to make their life better. Of course, they're my kids, so I'm going to say they're the best, awesome, most unbelievable kids in the whole wide world, but, you know, they, they really are. <laughs> What Rich wants to do is turn his new backyard into an extreme playground for the kids. We live in an area where it takes at least an hour to go drive to a track to go ride. Um, you know, the nearest skate park is at least 35 minutes away. So what is an extreme sports playground? Well, one that includes a skate pole, a motocross track, and some water features for those hot summer months. To help Rich realize his dream, we teamed him up with Christmas Star, a landscape design company led by a visionary named John Cohen. I call myself an art warrior because serious art changes people's lives. John and Christmas Star are known for their cutting-edge designs that leave their high-end clients gushing with praise. He incorporated every one of my wishes into his artistic plan. He's an excellent, excellent designer. And if you're lucky enough to get him, it'll be your best dream come true. To start the ball rolling, John and his crew get the lay of the land. I'm going to lay a track out today. I'd like to walk it with you while I do that. To help John and his crew visualize a motocross track in someone's backyard, Rich Jr. shows up for a few spins in the dirt. John's concerned that the kids have something soft to land on when they wipe out. That's when, not if. And what I was thinking was where the track takes a sharp turn, that would be a good area to have lawn in case somebody wipes out. Yeah. They go right onto the tumble on the lawn and keep them away from more of the uh, possible tragedy spots on the track. <laughs> Before any work can start, John meets with architect John Heberling to come up with an artistic rendering of the plans for the extreme backyard. You're coming around this water, you're jumping. Mm -hmm. You're coming around here, you're jumping. What we're dealing with is something very unusual, which is a basically a beautiful landscape with a motor course track going through it. This is the line where you start berming up on the grass. The final rendering is the most critical element in communication uh, over any kind of a blueprint because that visualization gives the person a mental goal of where things are going. It's not a backyard anymore. Now, when he steps out, they own all of that land. That's now their place. Once the drawing is done, they present their plan to homeowner Rich. We generated this drawing, which is going to be the way we perceive the track to look. No way. <laughs> Are you kidding? Look at this. It's that's like what, a, an oasis in the desert. And this is really going to flow and not look in a hot area and not look artificial. It's just been procured out of uh, a dry desert and water bubbling up. Wow, this is amazing. It's, it, it's awesome. Rich approves, so here's John's plan. A five-foot-wide motocross track will snake its way around the backyard. A system of riverbeds will start at a waterfall coming off a rock panel wall at the top of the yard, draining down into separate aquatic pools. A 12 by 15 skateboard bowl will be squeezed in to keep the X factor as high as possible. A project like this would usually probably with the clients we work with, it'd be a half million dollar job and we'd be on it for six months instead of two weeks. Half a million dollars would be nice, but homeowner Rich Taylor has 41000 in hard cash. Using the power of television, Backyard Nation is hoping to score a lot more in donated items and services. 
It'll be interesting to see the final tab when we're all done. Whatever the cost, John has 12 days to get the backyard ready for the big reveal party. After the two Johns show the rendering to the crew, Christmas Star is ready to take on the extreme backyard. Plan of attack right now is we're going to do just a quick rough site scraping to clean up the site. To kick things off, landscape artist Nishé gladly destroys an unwanted shed. This is the last time Zach and Richard will be allowed in the backyard until the reveal party 11 days from now. Dad wants it to be a surprise. I'm very jealous. I wanted to do that. The rest of the crew tears into the backyard, removing underbrush and wild growth. And one big Carolina pine is in need of major trim. Just take the top off right there and you're good. cleaned up here, right here. Langston Ball, Christmas Star's project manager, will be keeping close tabs on the budget and schedule. We got started on the trenches today, and those were scheduled for tomorrow. This tree stuff isn't out yet, but we've got most of the tree work done, and that was allotted for two days, so that's probably going to be coming in under the amount of time. So I think we're actually about in front of our schedule. This place looks so much bigger now. Yeah. I had no idea it was actually this big. You just, you, it, it's so deceiving when you have trees and sheds and, and all the stuff in the way. It's just, I'm pretty, I'm pretty yeah. stoked right now. Towards the end of the day, Nishay wants to know if Rich has any ideas in terms of plants and other greenery. Are you going to want Japanese landscape garden? here? Or do you just want <laughs> grass? I mean, do you want it to look beautiful and yeah. like a yard, you know, intertwined? Yeah, I want it. But John has his own idea. Excuse me. We're dictating the theme. We can check on a couple things here and there, but we're taking control. This is uh, this is where he's going to be living. I know, so I'm gonna I know but we're going to tell Rich what the, what the theme is. John said, no, 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 no. You don't ask him what he wants. You tell him what you're going to do. You know, so I just kind of kept my mouth shut and kind of went, you know what? I just got to trust this guy. What I get is what I get. That was kind of just a, a little bit of a eye-opener. I should have said something, and I didn't. If Rich isn't happy, he better speak up, or he'll be looking at an extreme nightmare in his own backyard. Stick around, you're watching Backyard Nation. It's the second day in homeowner Rich Taylor's soon-to-be extreme backyard. The grounds have been cleared and are ready for the next step, trenches. Trenching is pretty much where it starts, because we got to put in all of our water pipes, all of our electrical pipes any foundations for walls, making the holes for all of the important stuff that you don't see before we put anything else over it. So it's one of the hardest jobs, making the trenches, but once they're done, everything kind of flies afterward. The trenches take all of day two and most of day three. By day four, Rich has a backyard full of dirt, some holes in the ground, and not much else. Langston's been left to hold down the fort, but where's Christmas star leader John Cohen? <laughs> He's clearing his head at an ice skating rink, where he practices his own form of ice dancing. Building what I build is rhythm. It's about rhythm. I don't have a separation between those the way I think. And my whole life has been so on the edge that this became the best dance I can find. A couple of Rich's buddies drop by to check out the plans for the skate bowl. Justin Eldridge and Andrew Brinkman are pro skaters. Hey, what's up? Nice to see you again. How's it going? Good to see you again. The original plan calls for a kidney-shaped skateboard bowl, approximately 12 by 14 feet, to be squeezed in between the track and the riverbeds. So this is the preliminary dig-out for the bowl that we're looking at right here. It's a little bit small. It's a little bit small. Yeah. All right. It needs to be three times this big, I think. You would drop in, right, and you would come over here, and you go around. And once you could come back out, you would, like, be able to ollie over the hip, come back into this bowl, do this, come back over here, like, 
See, that'd be fun, you know? That'd be, that'd be sick. So that pond is gonna have to be smaller. So we need to make this bad boy bigger, all right. It needs to be big and fun and, and, and have some, you know, excitement to it. It can't just be rinky-dink. We flexible here? What are we talking about? We're entirely flexible. Designs change all the time. So there's a lot of extras, I guess you could call it, in the landscape that go more toward aesthetics uh -huh. rather than functionality. And it's pretty expensive, so I think we could make up for everything we need to do here by just getting rid of some of that. The skate bowl will become more rounded and grow to 20 feet by 20 feet. This means the plan needs to change for the track and the riverbeds. I think John is probably going to be the most hurt <laughs> or, you know, want to, want to maintain the most architectural elements. But we are here to make Rich happy. Langston phones John with the news. The skateboard bowl has to be about twice as large, which means that you have to lose some of this extra landscape stuff that you have going on. So, I mean, there's stuff that, there's real stuff that needs to be talked about before we just start having more stuff show up. No, it does change, it does change stuff, Don, it does. So you're saying you're absolutely refusing to change any of the design because you, it's more important that you get what you want as opposed, dude, you are so special ed, follow me here. I need you here instead of having this five-year-old conversation on the phone where we both get pissed off to sit down and actually look at paperwork, which is, you know, I realize it's like the bane of your existence, but that's how actual decisions happen. He has no idea how much each section costs or anything. I'm the one that's done the entire budget, scheduling, everything. So I have to sit down with him and have a meeting, which he's refusing to have right now. And he's telling me that I don't know my, <laughs> my hole in the ground, which is why I hung up, because I, you know, he's the one that's not here, and I'm the one actually taking care of business. Okay, it's day four, and work has come to a standstill. Now, the homeowner, Rich Taylor, is looking for the most radical backyard this side of the X Games. He's looked at John's plans, and he wants to make some changes. He's thinking a little more fun, a little less foo-foo. Rich has brought in another friend, Brian Staben, to consult on the motocross track. Brian's company, Dirtworks, has built several pro tracks around the country. What can we do to make this easier for you? We've got to figure out where we're going to put the jumps, where the ponds are going to be in relationship to the jumps. Probably a minimum of 15 feet of clear all the way through for the track. 15 feet width? Yeah. Okay. At minimum. Brian's looked at the plans, and they're not even close. The motocross track needs to grow from 5 feet wide to 15. This threatens John's entire grandiose plan for rivers and ponds. Usually when you walk onto something like this, you know, you got an exact set of plans and everything's measured out right and you know where it's going to go and, and, you know, right now we're kind of I've pushing one thing out of the way to fit another thing. Gotcha. Okay, well, that makes sense. look who shows up. All right. Fresh off the ice, John steps into the line of fire. Unfortunately, I think you need to repeat all of that to this gentleman who just arrived. Hey, John. Brian designs motocross tracks for a living. So... Where were you last week? Huh? John, don't don't start with the attitude. I'm, right? I got an attitude. Well, who gives a shit about your attitude? You're f***ing late to work, all right? You keep your mouth shut. I'm you, dude, all right? You're not dealing with s***. Get just got here. out of here. You don't have the power to throw me off of here. I'm I sorry. I have the power to no, throw you don't. you I don't work for you, I work for Trident Construction Management, all right? I'm a licensed contractor. You know not license. So if anybody needs to leave, it's you, all right? So shut the up and get your job done. You know what? We don't have time to argue like five-year-old kids. We need to get real work done here. Then shut your mouth and you... stop being ugly and stop telling me you don't have anything. John, you have a side. rendering. I gave you a site plan. You have yet to do any work on the site plan actually established with You're on the same team with me, then you shut your I'm mouth. I'm not on your team, all right? I'm on the team that gets done. You need to get on board. You pay your rent because of me, so shut up. <sighs> Actually, I pay my rent because I make sure Christmas Star operates. All you do is f up and make sure Christmas Star makes no money. It might seem over the top, but this is how Langston deals with John's artistic temperament. Whenever we reach impasses, I pretty much do whatever I can to make John just flip out. And, you know, I mean, he's going to have a tantrum, but I get results. John definitely needs me a lot more than I need him. Listen to the man who came to tell you what needs to happen. Make your adjustments as necessary, all right? Links is a young black man out of South Central who has a loud mouth on him, and he's full of integrity. And I'm this wild, super creative uh, builder and dancer. I came here with a bad attitude, and all you do is stimulate it. You know what? F your bad attitude. Right now, you need to get to work. Different things. We're talking about motor. Obviously, these guys have issues. Brian tries to diffuse the situation by bringing the discussion back on point. What's the most important thing here? When I talked to Rich earlier, he expressed to me that he wanted this thing to be an extreme backyard for his boys. I think that's probably his first concern. Second concern is probably how can we make this thing look killer when it's all done. These ponds, I mean, have to shrink. I mean, you know, a lot of this, this has to be re, rethought out. Let's say, let's say our... Whoever the hell it is, I'll call you back. 
Brian's the one who seems most concerned about giving Rich exactly what he wants. I'm just going to paint where, and again, these are just areas to work in. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Now the track is more of a real track that the boys can dice around on and race each other and you know we'll be able to build some some really fun jumps and yeah this is really good you know what i gotta go get my kids i'll be right back okay here's where we're at so far this big pile of clay still has to become a motocross racetrack this hole i'm standing in still needs to become a pond and this hole still has to become the bigger better skateboard bowl these guys got their work cut out for them. Coming up, John goes on the defensive. Arrogant You mean the guy who gets so creative that we're doing the most incredible thing? It's a new day in the extreme backyard. Head honcho John Cohen has yet to show, leaving his crew to do the best they can. I guess he's, he's late like always, you know. So is it's he normal. always late? It's normal for him, you know. This company is it's all about late, you know. Our first start is about 12 o'clock, you know, during the, day, during the day and finish around 12 o'clock at night, so <laughs> that's normal for us. We're putting the rebar, okay. the rebar for our wall right here. Let's see these guys, what they're doing. With or without John, progress is being made on the back wall. This is going to be for the, the retaining wall. Right. This is a retaining wall for the soil, which we're going to mount on top of it, and it's going to be the track. We're kind of like a little bit slow right now because yeah. we don't have the cement. Tomorrow when we pour the cement, we're going to start with the block. This backyard contains many nations. We have, uh, a ver, Alexander, where are you from? Peru? Yeah. Oh, it's we Peru. have a Peruvian ah. guy right yeah. here. Ah. We have a Peruvian guy. <laughs> Mexico. We have some uh, Guatemala yeah. from Guatemala. Yeah. El Salvador. The heart and soul of Christmas Star are the people who do the real work. Mexico lindo y querido, si muero lejos de ti, que digan que estoy dormido y que me traigan aquí, que digan que estoy dormido y que me traigan aquí. Mexico lindo y querido, si muero lejos de ti. Yeah! <laughs> the work pace changes dramatically when Rich Taylor's friend and track builder Brian Staben shows up to start work in the dirt. Basically, we're going to go through the whole yard and try to process it all, get it all mixed right so that the jumps compact hard and we can get good compaction out of it. Processing is just, just mixing. That's all that is. Adding water to dirt and mixing it so it's the right consistency. Oh, yeah. This guy, he knows exactly what he's doing. dusty out there. The next day gets going with a load of cement making its way to the back of the yard for the retaining walls foundation. We're pumping 10 yards of concrete in, 10 cubic yards. The footing for our wall, which is then going to have to put panels on. So once this is done, we're going to start laying down our block and then raising the wall. In the backyard business, it's not cement. You call it mud. Expensive mud. Here's where we're at in the budget. Concrete and pumping, $3,200. Rebar, $2,100. Dumpster rental, $800. Labor, $12,900. The total so far, $19,000. The combination of slow work pace and John's continued absence has rich thinking big changes. We have five more days to do this job and I've got this. This is uh, this is unacceptable, really. So we need to we need to make a move and and get it done. Rich wants to toss out all John's water features. That means no more meandering rocky streams and aquatic ponds. He wants a concrete bottom wading pool for the kids to play in. John finally shows his face, and the dirt starts to flood. Everybody's kind of just been waiting around all day because they don't know what direction to go in, and nothing's really getting done. There's six days, and today's the first day any concrete has gotten poured, and they're not even a quarter of the way done. I know it's a big job, but it kind of seems like 
things should be moving ahead. There's only five days left, and, you know, I got a yard that's dirt. I can tell you you're not very happy right now. So, I mean, what's what's the deal? Are you going to work with this or not? What am I doing? Well, instead of doing the, the streams and the pond, the rock pond, we want to make it into, you know, a cement pool that we can, you know, the kids can wade in. Maybe it could even turn into some kind of a jacuzzi. Because okay, I won't put my signature on a concrete pool. I don't want anything to do with it. I want nothing to do with it. It's not what we built. That's yeah, what I mean, we that's what we, that's what we want is some kind of chlorinated pool that can flow in and you know, the kids can play in. It's not what we do. All right, well, then you don't have to do it. We're Someone not, else can do it. We're not talking. I didn't ask for your voice right now. Okay, but we're, we're trying to make decisions. Understand. No, I'm not trying to argue. Right. I'm just, we're trying to make decisions. Well, you're not understanding rock panels with, like, waterfalls coming off it. Right, but into they're falling, a concrete pool. falling into a concrete bowl. Yeah, correct. Right, I don't do that. I don't, I tear concrete bowls out. That's when we come to a job site and look at it and go, look, this gets torn out and thrown away. All right, we're wasting your time the on con this. The concrete panels and lighting. Link some butt out, man. That's not your you design. You said you're your not going to do it. Butt out. Butt out of what? You said you're not going to do it. We don't give a f why you're not going to do it. You're not going to. End of topic. Brian, you're more than capable of doing it, right? Yeah. If you don't want to do it, then Brian can do it. I'm not building a concrete bowl. Okay, so then you're not doing it. Brian, you're apparently doing that now. Okay, so that's been decided. Why don't you stand over there and be on that team? No, I'm on the f***ing side of the team that people want to get done, all right? Team. So maybe you need well, to then, then stop to acting like play, that. Play on the team of everyone who's here to work, and not the f arrogant all right? Arrogant You mean the guy who gets so creative that we're doing the most incredible things in the country? That's real and, arrogant. And you're failing, so I'm sorry. Rich doesn't comprehend how dramatic the water is bringing the heavenly spirits into a garden so people feel that connection. You know, the pond that John wanted to put in is kind of like, you know, a really pretty pond, but it's not really something that I want. That anybody in this country would turn down a beautiful, huge water feature in their backyard is beyond my comprehension. I want to use my backyard. I don't just want to look at it. The yeah. bottom line is... We signed up for this show to do the extreme backyard, meaning BMX, motocross, skateboard. But then it got turned into to this beautiful backyard that would be awesome to sit here and, and, you know, sip wine or a cocktail and check it out and look at the lighting. But during the day, my eight-year-old kid wouldn't be able to go pop wheelies in the backyard because he'd hit a rock and crash. Now we need to move forward with what I want. Outnumbered, John retreats. Langston's reward for siding with the homeowner? He's been fired. The next day rolls around to find Brian doing his best to keep things moving forward. I'm going to start digging in the center right now. Your form's going to be two foot six back. So we'll leave this open, and I can just take this straight from, from here to your pond. The boss of the crew that's out here is nowhere to be seen. While Brian, who has nothing to do with these guys at all, has been running the show. That's unacceptable. If it wasn't for Brian, this job, I am 100% confident, would not be done. Like, probably ever. Rich has had enough. He sets the wheels of change into motion. So if they walk, if we can get them to just walk off today, then we've got 22 grand to finish this project with Brian's crew and whatever we can pull in. So that being said, I mean, you need to think about it and maybe make some phone calls and, and just kind of contemplate if you want to try to fix this mess that we have here, you know? Brian hits his cell phone to line up his crew while Rich waits for John to show up so he can pull the trigger. They want to boot this guy. Everybody's come to me. Either he does it or I do it. They started this thing a week and a half ago. And nothing's done. They got one little, maybe a hundred foot, four foot high wall built. He's had 15 guys here doing nothing. The waiting game is over. It's end game for John Cohen and Christmas Star. Nothing's really getting done because you aren't able to do your thing. I think we just need to make a change at this point and just get this job done with another crew, a whole nother idea just to get it done. I can't handle it. I got it. I got to make a change. I don't even understand. I'm whatever. This is <laughs> unbelievable. Well, that's a wrap for Christmas Star. They're packing up and leaving. The client is always right. And this is our client. No hard feelings, which is going to go forward. When we come into a project, we don't give our power away to any client. We steer the ship, and we take the client's input, and we create the tools and manifest you know, the beautiful reality of that person's desire. 
People get cold feet all the time. They've spent a fortune and they just see steel and pipes and, and conduit. There's a lack of the big picture vision. Oh, no question. Thank you. Thank you. That's why I gotta go skate and dance. <laughs> <laughs> Can this man save Rich's yard from an extreme disaster? Welcome back to Backyard Nation. So far, homeowner Rich Taylor's quest for an extreme backyard has been a lot of extreme drama. Butt out, man. That's not your design. You just said you're not going to do it. You're not going to. End of topic. I came here with a bad attitude, and all you do is stimulate it. If anybody needs to leave, it's you. Now we need to move forward with what I want. But there's a new sheriff in the backyard. Rich has convinced his buddy Brian Staben to take the job over and try and make the best of a bad situation. So, welcome. You're taking over now. I'm what, back. All right, what do, we, what do we do first? What are your first steps here? Tonight, our main goal is to get the skate park ready for cement and rebar tomorrow and that lower pond. Six o'clock tomorrow morning, we got rebar coming in. Eight o'clock, we got concrete, so. Dude, you're not messing around. We don't even know what time. It's a... Uh, 420, so we got a lot of work to do before 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And Rich, now now that you're done fighting, I mean, you, you've you been fighting for for a week about your backyard. How do you feel now? I have no worries now. I mean, none. And, and not only is he, is he your buddy, but, I mean, you got one of these in your backyard, right? Yeah, I got something like this in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that grin, dude. Originally, Brian just dropped by to help with the track layout. But when it comes to backyards, this guy can handle the whole nine yards. My name is Brian Staben. I have a company called The Rock Shop. We build artificial rock waterfalls on swimming pools and ponds. And our other company is Dirtworks. A big part of what we do is build motocross tracks all the way from just maybe a small private track for kids to ride on to professional tracks for guys to train supercross. All right, the torch has been passed. Brian's already at work. The place is excited. Look at this. Progress, baby. Night doesn't even stop these guys. Once stakes are driven into the ground, outlining both the pond and the skate bowl, it's time for Brian to roll out the excavator. In two hours, he's already graded it out. The pond is in place. The skateboard park is already staked off. They're going to have the metal bent and ready for concrete first thing in the morning. The new day starts off with a delivery of precast rock panels donated by Brian's company, The Rock Shop. Total value, $20,000. The backyard budget of $41,000 just shot up to $61,000. Way to go, Brian. We got here at 6. We finished digging the skate park last night at about 10.30 or so. Today, our main focus is the skate park and the lower pond. Work is getting done faster than we can shoot it. The pond, already circled with rock panels, is being blasted with cement. And the skate bowl is lined with rebar and next in line for its mud treatment. Oh, I'm so happy. Now it's like, no worries, no stress. I know everything's going to get done right, and it's, I know it's going to be what I want. There's no question in my mind. Now let's pack it up in there. The work is going so well, Rich and his boys can take some time out for play. Off to the track. Bye bye. See you at the track. That's what we do. Come play in the dirt. Watch them roll around. It's pretty fun. Keeps them out of trouble. Eight-year-old Richard already has some serious bike skills. His younger brother Zachary is no slouch. Come on, Zachy! How many five-year-olds you know can do this? Good job, Zach. Good job. Nice. You are ripping. Now it's Dad's turn. Rich was once ranked number seven in the country. Looks like he's still got it. Oh, jeez, what a ham. Back at the house.
house, work on the extreme backyard is advancing at an extreme rate. The pond is being sealed and will soon be ready for water. The skate bowl is being scraped and shaped, and the rock panels are going up on the back retaining wall. The guys are starting to put up all the GFRC panels. This is glass-reinforced concrete. We're basically just veneering the whole front of this wall to look like a rock cliff. GFRC panels make it a lot easier to bring rock work into anyone's backyard. The quick and dirty of making these is you go out and find a boulder that you like or you go find a cliff that you like out on the mountain. We make a latex mold off of a real boulder and we can produce hundreds and hundreds of parts out of one mold. Once a mold is made, it's shot with a mixture of concrete and fiberglass. The result is a natural looking rock sculpture that weighs thousands of pounds less than the real thing. The shape, everything is perfect. I mean, it was molded off of a natural rock. We don't got to fake it. We don't got to try to carve it. The molds do all the work for us, basically. Brian's company, Dirtworks, is a family affair. His dad, Frank, is filling in the seams on the wall. That's what we're doing right now is kind of building this area into this area so they kind of blend and, and it moves with the lines. That's one of the most important things because a lot of times people just start putting mud on there. What you really try to accomplish is something that looks natural. His 14-year-old son, Mitchell, has sketched out a rough design for the motocross track. Hey, my architect got the track plans back to us. We have the design. No, you show them. You drill them. All right, so right down there on the straightaway, we're going to have a straightaway with a couple braking bumps into the corner so you can kind of jump into them and then make a right hand. We're going to have two tables and then a big roller, and then right here it can split, and you can do two things. You can either jump all the way up or you can go to the right and kind of double up into it. That's the track. Once the panels are up, Concrete is poured to fill in all the holes and spaces between the rock panels and the cinder block wall. Back from the track, Rich couldn't be happier. I've been to many skate parks that don't have a bowl like this cool. This isn't a little piddly little half pipe bowl or anything. This is like the real deal. Amazingly, Rich has been able to keep his kids out of the backyard. They know something is going on across the street, but they won't get to see it until the work is all done. What do you think is going on across the street in the other backyard? Huh? Digging big holes. Digging big holes? Mm -hmm. It's going to be very, very, very cool and fun. Do you think? Mm -hmm. I'm just anxious to see their face when they walk around the corner. You know, that's kind of what I'm really looking forward to. They're pretty lucky little dudes, that's right? for sure. Look on the backyard station. <laughs> it's been just 24 hours since Rich Taylor gave Christmas Star the boot and got his buddy Brian Staben to step in. You want to know the difference a day makes? The pond has been dug up, blasted with shot creek, and sealed. Now they're just adding the rock panels, and this baby's almost ready for water. And the skateboard bowl? Check it out. In the original plan, it was small, square, and it was stuck between a rock riverbed and one very hard head. Now it's a drop-in dream come true. Skater Andrew Brinkman helped design the bowl. Now he gets to be the first to skate it. It's nice, it's good shape, you can flow through it. Once you get sanded down and get some wax on the coping, it'll be even more fun. The rock panels are all in place and ready for coloring. It's a complicated process. We're coloring the wall, basically painting it to be a certain color with highlights and low lights to look like real rock. We're applying an acid through a Hudson sprayer and then dabbing it with a sponge. Learning how to apply it takes about a year of training. And you'll see when you go through the whole thing, by the end of the day, this thing's gonna look phenomenal. Progress is being made on all fronts, so Brian goes shopping. We want this place to look like a park because we got a skate park, we got a motocross park, so we're looking for park lighting to give it that effect. These are them right here, so we can throw four or five of these on a cart and we're good to go. This is the hard part, finding the cart. We can come here and I can get concrete for the guys, I can pick up tools, I can get paint, I can get appliances, we can get pumps, we can get whatever we need for a water feature we're doing. I, I think on average we probably do six trips a day to Home Depot. <laughs> Brian heads back to start carving out the extreme backyard's defining feature, the motocross track. It's 
especially here, we don't have an exact design because we're also trying to work around the trees and everything that's going on. So I'm kind of making it up as I go. After I make one section, I might see another section totally different because I'm thinking about riding it and I'm thinking, oh, if we came around this corner and did this jump, that would be cool. So I'll build that now. You want to be able to keep a rhythm as you're riding the whole time and bottom line is you just want it to be fun. It's the last day. Tomorrow's the party when the Taylor boys finally get to feast their eyes on their totally radical extreme playground. Here's what has to get done before the party can get going. They need to finish coloring the pond's rock panels before they can fill it with water. All the electrical needs to be wrapped up, lights need to go up, all the plant material needs to go in, and Brian needs to finish the last sections of the motocross track. We're hoping to finish this project by tonight. We got a long way to go today, for sure, but I think it's completely doable. The day gets going with the arrival of all the plant materials from Green Meadow Nursery. Owner Kyle Perner has stepped in and donated all this green for no green. Total value, $11,000. As the plants start going in, a shipment of sod from Southland Sod Farms shows up. For landscape designer Kyle Perner, a few strips of green can bring a backyard to life. So we're just going to kind of lay out a nice ribbon of sod that kind of goes through here. And we have another ribbon that goes all the way around the skate park there. And then we have some more that goes in the front. So it's just kind of in between the track areas. We're going to try and put as much grass as we can. I mean, it's great to have a track, but you do see a lot of dirt because, you know, it's a track. So by putting grass ribbons everywhere helps kind of soften it. People always say when, when the grass goes down, now I have a backyard. For the rest of the day and into the night, it's a frenzy of planting, painting, wiring, and the fine art of moving dirt. finished pond is a wonder to behold. I just recycle the water. It goes right through a regular pool pump and a cartridge filter. And Rich can throw some chlorine in this thing and it'll stay as clean as a swimming pool. We're knocking out the finishing touches on the last day and we got to get it done because tomorrow Rich is bringing in a whole crew of people for an ultimate party to celebrate his extreme backyard. And we want to toast Brian Staben and his crew. He did in four and a half days, two weeks of work. He actually just accomplished the impossible. Look at this place. It doesn't seem possible, but it was only 12 days ago when Rich's backyard was a barren desert in search of an oasis. The transformation is a minor miracle. The hugely improved skate bowl is ready for a lifetime's worth of ollies and owies. The pond beckons with a whispering chorus of cascading water. And the motocross track? <laughs> Come on. I mean, how many people have one in their backyard?